So let me introduce you uh, Stonex. For who of you uh, doesn't know uh, about uh, this brand, um, it is born for uh, GNSS um, market, and it has uh, widened uh, into also other um, sectors. Uh, now uh, we are uh, reselling Total Station GIS products with dedicated software. We have uh, the 3D scanning uh, department and also. Um, solutions for machine control and agriculture. Let's see the uh, 3D um, products uh, that we have in Stonex. Uh, so um, our history, uh, our renovation about 3D products starts from the uh, 2022 with the uh, SLAM X120 Go. Then uh, um, in the next months, uh, we have introduced the XVS solution that is a uh, um, Visual Slam uh, um, based uh, uh, scanner. XFly for um, UAV, it's a UAV LiDAR. X70GO, that is uh, another SLAM solution that introduces also the static mode for improving the uh, density and resolution of the point cloud in certain areas. And here we are in September 2024. This year uh, in Intergeo, we are introducing uh, X40GO, another uh, Stonex SLAM entry level solution and uh, uh, Nuvo, that will be the topic of this presentation. We are also introducing uh, in the next month the X200 Go. You can see it uh, in our booth. This uh, will be our uh, high-level solution for SLAM. Okay. In this video, you have uh, uh, some uh, key points that I will reveal uh, and I will say you more in detail in the next slides, just to catch your attention. And the name of the product is uh, Nuvo. This is a urban mapper solution. It is um, uh, based uh, on uh, cameras. So we have uh, uh, three cameras in the front and other two in the back part of the product. Um, every camera is a 12 megapixel and the sensor is a global shutter. Inside, we have also a GNSS board, the Wi-Fi for communicating with a tablet. No cables are needed for uh, having uh, uh, the communication with the device. And we also have a visual camera that uh, uh, is uh, uh, the main character of this product. We will see in a while why. We have uh, an internally, internal battery, four hours of operating time, but if you need a, additional power, there is a possibility to um, give external power supply. Internal memory, which goes from four to eight terabytes. And the system has quick release connection system. Actually, the system can be, uh, is made by two parts. You see a line. Uh, close to the handle because uh, you can use the system uh, also only in the half uh, frontal part, like this. So this is a standalone part which can be wear um, and uh, it, it has three cameras for covering a field of view of around 300 degrees. 
in this part, we have the GNSS, uh, the IMU, the motherboard. So this is the core part of the product. If you, can, if you want, uh, there is a possibility to add also the back part. So to cover 360 degrees as field of view and use it on a car for mobile mapping. The interface, it's very, very easy. This is one of the key points of this solution. Uh, this is the main interface that you see when you power on the device. And we have the GNSS configuration page, the camera for page for entering the survey, a project management uh, uh, page where you can delay the projects and manage uh, the processing. And lastly, uh, the, the setting for defining the mode. So if you want to use it uh, in the wearable solution or on the car. When, when you enter the camera page, this is the interface. So we have the possibility to uh, view a map, to set the camera uh, parameters like exposure, gain, and so on. Uh, enable or disable the GNSS, choose to move to lateral cameras, and uh, you have uh, the information of the status of the device uh, in the right uh, bottom part of uh, the screen. You have the signal of the uh, GNSS and the status of the visual camera. In those two information will generate the um, capturing quality um, icon that is uh, the, the green uh, the green dot and uh, this is essential for knowing in the field uh, how you are working if the data that you are collecting are good or not in case they are not good you can slow down in order to help the visual camera into um, having good quality the last part is the lateral, uh, are the light lateral icons in which you have the tools for AI and Visual Slam. Again, a short video. Here we see uh, the main interface. Ah, OK, here the uh, GNSS uh, page in which you can set uh, all the parameters for the, the, con the connection. The camera, now we enter into the camera page so you can see how quick is uh, starting with that mobile system. So I show you the map. Uh, I show you the uh, camera settings. You can leave the automatic mode. And then you have just to press the start button, like uh, taking a video. Define the resolution that you want for the data. And that's it. You can start walking or driving. And uh, on the right, you have the, the, the status of uh, the data quality. So it's a super easy, very easy um, solution that anyone uh, can, can, can use without need of initialization or calibration at the beginning. I introduce you um, the, the technology, uh, technology on which the system is based. We call it the regenerative visual slam because when you, have, uh, uh, when you lose the fixed solution, and uh, you have a situation like the red one, so in float, uh, um, you see that uh, in the bottom part of the display, we have the float solution, but the visual slam is working. So at the end, what it matters is uh, the green indicator that says you, you can go, you can move on, because there is the visual camera that is uh, integrating uh, uh, the missing uh, GNSS signal. So consider a situation like that. We have uh, a fixed uh, signal 
till the green part, then we lose it. But here, in uh, the red part uh, where we have the float solution, there is uh, the visual slum information that uh, can help us uh, in uh, uh, having a complete trajectory. Lastly, if you also do not have the visual slum, so in the situations where the indicator that I was talking about a few seconds ago is red, you can have, again, the possibility to have good results because uh, the processing of the data will be made in photogrammetry. So the photogrammetry could uh, manage that missing information. And at the end, all your trajectory will have a solution. Um, some uh, uh, phases, uh, another important feature of the system is uh, the use of AI for segmentation, which are the steps that, uh, as in any segmentation, we, we do. As first, we recognize an item that could be, for example, um, a stop sign, a class uh, stop sign. Then we have the detection of it to locate it, to assign a position of the element. And lastly, we have the segmentation, which is the process that isolates uh, the item uh, with respect to all the surrounding. So, so those are three elements give you uh, one important complete uh, information, which is the semantic information of the items. Any information of the items that is uh, uh, segmented in the field um, has uh, all the information related to position, dimension, and this is uh, essential for working in the GIS or BIM world. This is the page where in the field you can see the detection and the segmentation moving, walking, or driving, you see that the elements like tree, cars, uh, walls, uh, and so on, are automatically recognized in the field. Which are those elements? Right now, right now the system um, is able to detect uh, traffic lights, street lights, road sign, benches, trees, cars, walls, sidewalk and road, door and window, and manholes. But because the system is based on AI, at the end there is no limit for that classes. It's just uh, a matter of training the AI, AI for uh, learning it additional classes that it can recognize. The system uh, wants to be a easy to use system, so it has a cloud processing system in which you can define the project, uh, the outputs that you want, point cloud, mesh, uh, uh, panoramas, uh, or elements that you have detected, and send them to a server. At the end, you will have back all the, the ready uh, data. So all the deliverables are point cloud and mesh, panoramas and trajectory, and also the segmented features. This is something very special that allows the customer to have ready in the office a shape file for a GIS application or IFC file for BIM projects. Here I show you which is the potential uh, of uh, the uh, BIM result, the IFC export. So in the field, uh, we got the segmentation. And uh, in the field, we got all the semantic information of the items, so position and dimension uh, that, they, uh, that they have. So that information in uh, uh, Revit can be transformed uh, into a BIM model and create an effect like that. Okay, thank you. 
if you want to meet us, uh, Stonex is uh, in all one booth uh, uh, 059. And uh, uh, here around there are my colleagues that can give you uh, a flyer 